Hiya, so this is the first video for the third lesson of the, um, what's it called now? The pack's been split in two, hasn't it? Um, the trigonom trigonometric functions. And this is really, really nice, this one. It's a nice little bit of algebra. And who doesn't like algebra? So we've got, we know from, from school, as well as college, that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always 1, hence the, that sign there, it's always 1, no matter what you put in, it's always 1. But I can make two new equations from it. So it says here, divide through by sine squared. So I've got sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta plus cos squared theta divided by sine squared theta is always equal to 1 over sine squared theta. Now then, sine squared theta over sine squared theta, that cancels out. That becomes 1. I've got cos squared theta over sine squared theta. I know that cot theta is 1 over tan theta. And I know that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. So cot theta is cos theta over sine theta. So cos squared theta over sine squared theta will be cot squared theta. I know that cosec theta is 1 over sine theta. So 1 over sine squared theta, and if you imagine like a bracket around the 1 over sine theta, all squared, it's the same. So that's going to be cosec squared theta. Can you do exactly the same uh, if I divide through by cos squared? So just give you just pause a bit and do it. I'm just going to write this one in here. There. So hopefully you divided through by cos squared. So what you've got is sine squared theta divided by cos squared theta plus cos squared theta divided by cos squared theta is always equal to 1 over cos squared theta. So we know that sine theta over cos theta is tan. So sine squared theta over cos squared theta is tan squared theta. There. And cos squared over cos squared, that's going to cancel out. And I know that secant theta is 1 over cos theta. So 1 over cos squared theta, you see it as a bracket with 1 over cos theta, all squared. That's got to be the same as secant squared theta. So I'll just write that in there. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I always do. My sines, my cosies, my cosecants and my secants with a capital letter. And somebody commented on it. Another teacher commented on it last year. So I'm going to try to do it lowercase to stop the grumbling. Uh, some people like to grumble for the sake of it. Right. So that then there, these extra two identities we use a lot. Right, so let's have a look here. So example one, it says solve 2 cot squared theta is 3 cosec theta. So if you look, cot squared and cosec squared. Now remember, remember the ones we had last year where we had something like uh, sine theta plus 3 cos squared theta is 2. And I always said to you, no matter what you're doing, always change the one that's got the power on it. And I change that into 1 minus sine squared theta. So this is exactly the same, but 
I'm using these two different identities instead. But it's always the one with the power on it that you change. So I'm going to change cot square here. So I'm going to have two lots of, so instead of cot squared, if I rearrange that function, it'll be cosec squared minus one is three cosec theta. So I've got two cosec squared theta minus two. I'm going to bring over that. I'm going to bring over the three cosec as well while I'm here. And then if I do it as a, poly, as, a, as a polynomial, as a disguised quadratic, I'll try and find my, um, let me press escape on the keyboard, hang on. Try and find my calculator because it seems to have disappeared off the bottom. No. So in poly, so it's a nice reminder, this isn't it really, about using poly. Uh, so we're we going. So we're going equation. It's not X here. <laughs> oh, hang on. There. Should be alright now. Just move the thing. Uh, go with poly degree two, and I've got two. Minus three, minus two. So what that gives us? So that gives us cosec theta is two, or cosec theta is minus a half. So we can do that for a second. Is minus a half. Now you've got to remember, I'm going to do it a little bit long-wise, but we don't need to. Well, actually, I might not. I know that cosec is 1 over sine. So I know that 1 over sine theta is equal to 2. So I don't need to write this one, this little line down. So just write here, really small, that 1 over sine theta is 2. And here, that 1 over sine theta is minus a half. But I can just flip them. So without thinking about it, I can just turn them upside down. So I don't need to think about those red lines. So cosec, if I flip it, is sine. And two, if I flip it, is a half. So if you think about two as being two over one, if I flip it, it's a half. So here I've got sine theta is minus two. So if you look, sine theta is a half is fine. That's got values with it. But sine theta is minus two. Uh, it doesn't. Why have I got different signs to everybody else on here? They've got a half and two. Is that a mistake on the pack, do we think? Let's have a look. Two minus three minus two. Yep, two minus three minus two. So that should be a minus two on the completed pack, then, shouldn't it? That should be minus a half. There. Right, okay. Okay, okay. Right. So this one, the sine feature is minus 2, doesn't work. So there's no solution here. And if you remember, we're being a bit more technical, we're saying that the modulus of sine theta must lie between plus or minus 1. Right, so for my sine theta is a half, that gives me, now um, if you look, I'm in radians, so we've always got to check these now. We're in that time here in this example. So that will give me theta is pi by 6. Then if I just graph it from minus pi to pi, I know that from minus pi to pi, and then I've got a half, that that's going to be pi by 6. So theta will be pi by 6 or 5 pi by 6. And I can use the symmetry because it's gone in by pi by 6 to know there. Right, I'm on 9 minutes 31 for explaining technically to there, so I'm going to stop that now.